Hey guys, welcome back to Music Talk with John. Today I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to show you some uh, recent uh, pickups that I'm kind of excited about. These are some, uh, I gotta stop rubbing my hands, it's probably annoying. Um, uh, some recent pickups that I made and uh, I'm really kind of excited about these. So I'm really happy to share them with you. So anyway, we're going um, to show you my recent pickups and uh, so sit back, kick your feet up and uh, let's talk music. Okay, so these are my recent pickups here. I have a couple to show you. It's kind of cool. I'm excited about it. Um, what I wanted to start with, though, uh, it's one I've been looking for for a while. It's not vinyl, but it is CD. Um, but Tom Petty's uh, playback, and this thing's in really good shape. So I was really happy to come across this at a really good deal. So uh, it's a six CD set. Um, each one has a theme. Number one, the big jangle. Two, spoiled and mistreated. Three, good booty. Uh, four, the other sides, five, through the cracks, and six, nobody's children. And I don't remember if this was a, um, like a, you know, box set of greatest hits compilation kind of thing with some extras thrown in. Um, yeah, it looks like it because the big jangle, breakdown, American Girl, anything that's rock and roll. So the hits are on here. And then a number three, Good Booty, has free falling and won't back down. So, I believe it's a combination of outtakes and demos and things like that, um, but it's Tom Petty, so you can't go wrong. It has the, uh, the original book in there, um, and just pictures, uh, so he's talking about the albums it looks like, um, the songs and things like that. Picture of Mike Campbell there. Dirty Knobs are coming to town. I'm excited to see him, but I'm not going to concerts yet. I'm really disappointed. I'm not going to see the Dirty Knobs at the Capitol Theater in Clearwater. Anyway, so some cool uh, Tom Petty picks and things like that in there. Um, playback. Don't know what that's for. Just a little pamphlet. Dumb. Supposed to be a poster. Who knows? Uh, playback. Home video, 17 greatest hits, also available. So a little advertising in there. And it has a little owl access thing, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, strange behavior. So like a little backstage pass deal, kind of cool. And then the uh, B4 CDs are in there. They're a little dirty. I don't know what, what whoever owned this was doing with this or how it got dirty, who knows. Uh, so that was a little wear, but I checked out each CD and um, they're all in good shape, so. Um, you know, for the easy price I paid for it, I'm not going to complain about anything. So anyway, so that's the Tom Petty one, which I'm, like I said, I'm excited to, to have now. I've been looking for this for years. Um, so now it is in my possession. So there we go. All right. So you already saw the first one. Um, this is just a good, great soundtrack. I mean, I, I don't have a lot of soundtracks, but this is just like a great compilation album. Um, it's a two record set. Um, I, listening to this again, I really see that, uh, I don't know if the director picked all these songs out, but whoever did this just did a great job of getting Forrest Gump through the years um, and picking songs um, that just highlight a time in, in, in history or, you know, um, in America. Uh, it goes from Hound Dog with Elvis Presley um, to Dwayne Eddy, Rebel Rouser, Credence is on here with Fortunate Son, The Four Tops, Aretha with Respect, um, Bob Dylan, Rainy Day Women, uh, woman, women uh, Beach Boys, The Sloop John B, um, Mamas and Papas, Buffalo Springfield, Simon and Garfunkel, Miss Rob, Miss Robinson. I mean, that's just the first album. There's uh, 17 songs on there. Second album, there's. Uh, 15 songs and it well there you go there's your BJ Thomas um, previous video that I talked about um, had a BJ Thomas album uh, raindrops keep falling on my head is on here um, the young bloods let's get together uh, the birds the fifth dimension uh, Leonard Skinner sweet home Alabama doobie brothers I mean Willie Nelson on the road again so I mean this is just a great album um, I think it was a colored colored vinyl also two record set Kind of just did a pocket deal here. I haven't had a chance to get it into better sleeves, but I will. The sleeves are nice, 
but man, the records were sticking to these things. I couldn't get them out of there. It was like, it was like a vacuum pocket when I tried to open it. And it still kind of, it's kind of tight and sticks together. So man, I, I almost was afraid I was gonna like ruin the album trying to get it out of there because I couldn't get enough space between the sleeve in there to get the record out. So I kind of pulled on it, on the uh, sleeve, the inside of it as I uh, um, try to get it out of there. So once it was out, I wasn't gonna put it back in there. Um, but I'll, you know, hold on to the sleeves either way. So, so when I first opened this, I'm like, man, this looks like old sleeves. And I hadn't had um, the good sleeves that I use it, that are um, the plastic kind that have padding inside. I didn't have any at the time. So that's why Forrest ended up in an old paper um, sleeve. But still better than that other thing. But uh, red vinyl, I'm not gonna pull out too much because I wanna get the new sleeves on this. Because this is a this is definitely going to be a soundtrack that I'll be playing uh, quite a bit. Um, yeah, so one was on red, and then one the first album was on blue, on blue vinyl, so red and blue. And I'm assuming that's because I'm looking at the front, and you have pretty much a red and blue theme, four scump and blue and red there. You know, all your songs are in blue and red on the back, so they're going through the, for the theme. So I can see why they picked those colors. Some, some I don't get. Some when they decide to color albums um, or do colored vinyl, I don't understand the color scheme sometimes. But that one works. Uh, next one, man, this one, oh, love this album. Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong. Um, these two together. I mean, I didn't. I've heard of Ella Fitzgerald this first time I really sat back and listened to her. Man, what a voice. Just, a, it just, uh, yeah, I kind of fell in love with her voice. And then Louie comes in with that raspy thing he calls a voice and um, it's just great. He brings his trumpet in and all that. So, um, and this is a Jazz Classics, um, pure virgin vinyl, 180 gram. It's the classic uh, Jazz LP. Um, I don't know if it's a series or not. A collector's edition, newly remastered, deluxe center sleeve, one pressing, limited edition. So one pressing usually means that they didn't, when they did the copy of the album, if I understand this right, they, it's, they take it and press it off the same copy multiple times instead of making a copy of a copy and then you getting a press off that and get a little bit less quality. It's, it gets very... I'm going to do a video on that one day to, to explain that because it's confusing as far as how the pressings work and there's a series called One, one Step and that's a one step pressing deal and um, it's interesting but it's, it's supposed to be like the vinyl, superior vinyl and uh, the way they press it is, is straight off of like a master copy so you're not near some adult hanging out. So anyway, to get back to this, highlights on here. Uh, all of it. <laughs> I mean, everything was great on here. Um, yeah, it's just a nice album. You could tell they, they, it seemed like they were enjoying each other's company, and the musicianship is great on here. So if you see this, especially this copy, I would definitely, definitely get it. If you're into jazz, yeah, that's just a great album. Uh, another great album, Otis Redding's uh, first album, Pain in My Heart. Uh, this is music on vinyl, 180 gram. Music on vinyl is another one of those uh, companies that do real quality pressings, and um, I have many of their albums, and I never have a pop on it. This one doesn't have one, and this is just a nice sounding album. I think it was just on black vinyl. Yeah, black vinyl. Uh, but this included the songs uh, "Pain in My Heart," which you might recognize. Um, Stand By Me, you get a cover of that. I'm gonna try to get this in here. One thing I don't like about music on vinyl is the sticky part of their, um, their album covers. So everything kind of just sticks when you're trying to get it back in there. Uh, you Send Me, that was a cover too. I believe, I believe that was a cover of that Sam Cooke song. I've only listened to this album once, um, so I'm trying to remember everything. These Arms of Mine, uh, Louie Louie, cover of that, and Lucille um, by Little Richard, I believe. I think that's that song. Probably, who knows. 
It's late. I'm tired. But anyway, this is a great album. I know that. And I'm going to get used to it by listening to it over and over and over again. So, Pain in My Heart. That's my Otis. And uh, that's his first album. Next one, I kind of went out on a limb. This is sort of a psych band. Um, garage band, I think they were also. So, it... it uh, at first, I kind of, the first couple songs, My Little Red Book and Softly to Me, I kind of, I was like, uh-oh, maybe this is not going to be good for my killer, no filler. But as the album progressed, it grew on me. And I think it's going to be just like anything, like there's a Zappa one I have where it's his early stuff and he didn't get into his weird Zappa stuff. Um, so, but it grew on me. And then I went back and could appreciate the earlier stuff and really watch how he grew. And if this is kind of how the, this worked for these guys. Um, to one album set, they're called, uh, the, album, the group is Love, and it's revisited, it is a compilation. This is the inside of it, and the back there with the band. They do a, a version of Hey Joe, which, uh, you know, from um, Jimi Hendrix. And uh, I don't, honestly don't um, have songs that I recognize the titles yet, but I did listen to this whole thing and, and did enjoy it, so it's got a little bit of a... Some of it's really well produced and orchestrated, and then some of it's like garage band stuff. Um, so it's it's really cool combo. So it, this is a group that's already growing on me. I can feel it growing on me, so it's going to continue to grow. So anyway, that's the band Love and Revisited. And I've seen a couple other YouTubers um, talk about this band, and that's kind of like what got me to check them out. So kind of glad I got them. I think they're probably more garage than psych, but they're kind of experimental in parts so it's pretty cool uh, next one is an album had on CD found a good good price on it so I picked it up it was uh, some nights by fun a lot of uh, voice processing and uh, auto-tuning which the lead singer really doesn't need he's got a just freaking crazy strong voice forgot his name uh, oh, this dude right there but he does that song with pink um, just give me a reason, da da da. Um, and that song was just, their, their vocals on that, or I think Pink hits a really crazy note on there. Anyway, I enjoy this album, and what was funny about it, well, not funny, was inside, you know, when I got it, so it has, uh, I don't know, pictures of the band, I guess this is a little booklet. Yeah, it has all the, the lyrics in here, and then, yeah, I guess the three three guy band. I know they were like kind of like a pieces of other bands, or this is just like a project. But um, I think they did a really good job. I know some people this this album's very annoying to them. They don't like the way it's produced, it's too slick in places. But I like it. It's a it's a fun album. And this one is on colored vinyl. It has a nice padding inside. And it's like a gray like a gray vinyl. And you can see right through it. It's nice. Um, nice clean album. Not a pop. So, enjoying this. Um, yeah, and I actually like this album. I don't know if they're ever going to do any more work, but I definitely liked it. But it has uh, the song Some Nights. There's some language on here, and sometimes I wonder why you need to have so much language. Um, and not that I'm, you know, have a problem with language in my music, but sometimes it's just like, why? Why is it there? You know, it's almost like annoying. You know, so now it's like, okay, it's not an album I can put on for my kids. Um, so anyway, Some Nights is, is on there, uh, We Are Young, that got played like um, crazy. And um, Stars was cool. So it's, it's, I like every song on this album, it's one I can put on and, and enjoy. Um, it, it's funny because there are these albums that I'm like, oh, these are great albums, I like them from beginning to end. Um, but I still don't like know all the songs and familiar with all the songs on there. But I, I definitely know that I like um, the album. So that kind of sticks in my head. And then I guess over time, you get used to all the songs that are on there. OK, so two more. Oh, no, three more. And two were a gamble. And you know, it's a gamble that paid off. And I'm glad I got these. Um, so I'll go with the, those two afterwards. But uh, this one I was happy to get, um, David Bowie's um, the, uh, the Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. I mean, yeah, another just classic Bowie album. Uh, a friend of mine pointed out that I didn't have this, and when I came across it, I grabbed it, and uh, glad I did. Um, 
so Starman is on here, um, Ziggy Stardust, I Forget City, um, but just every song on this is just great. I mean, it's just, just classic Bowie that the production's killer, has good sound to it. Um, I think it's just on regular old black vinyl. Yeah, black vinyl. And it has the original, probably a copy of the original sleeve. But they were nice enough to include a, like include this, but also include a copy that I just pulled out of the record sleeve, but it has the padding so it's better protected. Um, so they, better, better for the record. So you don't get scratched up and stuff on that paper. These things just don't want to go in. I just watched another YouTuber do a funny fit about that going, you know, when, when I'm not filming these things, uh, they go right in. But as soon as I turn that camera on, they don't want to go in there. You know, it's some kind of conspiracy that the, the sleeves don't want to go back in. But Anyway, so classic album. David Bowie's The Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. So that's in the collection now. Glad to have it. Um, next two, uh, picked up and gave it a shot because I just knew, uh, the, the one name's very vague and that's the next one I'll show you, but this one I knew because he's, uh, you know, John, uh, Enwistle, Entwistle from The Who, uh, Too Late the Hero. Um, I think what really put me over the top with this, like I like the songs and there's a little bit of, um, fun in the album. There's some, um... Not that fun, but fun, like he's having a good time, because obviously from the back cover you can see they're big goofballs. But uh, this guy here, right there, don't know if you recognize him, but Joe Walsh. He plays guitar on here, does some vocals, and just, that sells the album for me. It's just a prime area for Joe Walsh. Um, it's actually 1981. Um, but they're, the songs are a little, uh, like this one called Talk Dirty, and it's just, you know, making fun of words, basically, saying, you know. and. Yeah, Too Late the Hero, Love is a Heart Attack. Um, it's just a fun album. I, I, I like it. It's really well done. Um, good. It feels like 70s rock to me. It doesn't feel like it's, I mean, it's early 80s, so you're still in that 70s vibe. But um, yeah, really enjoyed it. And this was a, um, actually a promo copy too. So, the original, I still have to get the new sleeve on it. But it has him playing that bass, and then on the other side you have all your lyrics. And I think it has, yeah, it has the the white label. It's pretty white, I guess. I don't have too many promos, but uh, usually promos have um, white labels. I just noticed my cool background just stopped. I guess I need a longer background. Anyway, I guess you'll have to pay attention to me now. Anyway, the video's almost over. Uh, so the last one I have, so anyway, it's John Enwistle, Too Late the Hero, 1981. And the last one that I have here is um, Walter Egan, Not Shy. And um, the songs are good on this, uh, Magnet and Steel. If you don't uh, recognize the title, look it up and you'll know the song. It's definitely one of those songs um, that you heard but probably didn't um, uh, know the title. So anyway, the... Uh, album's great. I like everything on it. There's nothing uh, slow or going. I need to um, pass it on, but it feels like a Fleetwood Mac album, like Rumors era, like the first Fleetwood Mac with Stevie Nicks and um, Buckingham when that whole um, change occurred with new members of the band. Um, and uh, it just really has that sound to it in here. And it, the reason why is you have Lindsey Buckingham uh, producing it, and uh, I believe he's playing guitar on here. Then you have Stevie Nicks, you can hear her in there. So, um, great, uh, just a good album. I mean, if you like Fleetwood Mac, you ever see this one, I would pick it up. I don't know if Lindsey Buckingham um, did anything else with him, but uh, man, it's just, it's a good album. I like it a lot, so I'm glad I got it. I have to get a new sleeve on it. It's clean, black vinyl, clean. So, that one went in there nice, so be nice to me. There's your back cover of it. So, Walter Egan, Not Shy, and that came out in 78, so I think rumors are 77. So, yeah, you're right in there. So, that's, you can definitely get, feel the Fleetwood Mac presence on this album. 
I don't think Mick Fleetwood, did he even show up on here? Uh, Lindsey Buckingham, I'll have to look at the credits, but I can't remember if even Nick, uh, Mick Fleetwood might have shown up on there, but anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry about the background, but you know what? It's just how it goes sometimes. Underprepared for school, I guess. So anyways, I appreciate you watching. Definitely uh, hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying the show, and uh, hit that like button, and um, until next time, enjoy your music. Take care.